Hey there everybody, and welcome to my fishing guide for Region 3 of Monumenta. In this guide, I'll be going over the basic gear needed, the general mechanics and items you can acquire while fishing, and what to do with your fishing loot after you're done fishing. Before we dive into the fishing mechanics, let's go over the general gear you'll need to begin fishing. Currently, the best fishing rod in the game is the Dream Rod, due to it being unbreakable. The Dream Rod is obtainable after completing the Eldrass Oral Quest, but if you haven't finished the quest, a great substitute for the Dream Rod is going to be the Mermaid's Lure, a Region 1 Tier 5 fishing rod that has the same enchants as the Dream Rod, except it has Mending instead of Unbreakable. If you're a new player who decided to fast track to Region 3, you can buy this tiered fishing rod located at this NPC in Port Manteau as a usable option. In terms of gear, a Riptide Trident will be very handy in order to travel across bodies of water very quickly. For armors and weapons, you'll want items that are rare or higher in terms of quality, as tiered gear may not hold out as well in terms of combat. Finally, and most obviously, in order to catch these fish, you'll need to fish in any available body of water in Region 3 meaning you could fish here, here, maybe not there, this spot, and here as well. But regardless, pick your favorite fishing spot. Every fish that you catch in Region 3 has its own unique rarity, with 1 star being the lowest rarity and 5 stars being the highest rarity. Each fish also has its own unique potion effect, although it's not very useful given its short length or outright negative effects. The majority of the time fishing, you'll mostly be fishing up low rarity fish, random blocks, potions, and lower tiered gear. But on occasions, you can catch rarer items such as experience items similar to the Eldrass experience items, and lesser fishing crates. However, during your time fishing, there will be a chance for an interactive event which can be split between non-combat and combat events. In terms of non-combat events, there are four unique situations that can happen. In this first event we'll call Ring Rhythm, the goal is to match the timing of the moving gray dot by clicking whenever it lines up with the inner colored circles. Depending on the color of the smaller circles, you'll be required to use either left or right click, with orange circles requiring right click and the teal circles using left click, and green circles being indiscriminate between left or right click. Although, if you're using right click, you're probably insane. The moving gray dot will always slip around twice during this event, so make sure you pay attention to where the colored circles are, as going around the second time, the colored circles may change color or may disappear altogether, so it's important to pay attention to where they were. Audio cues also help as there's a little green note on the top of the circle that will give a small indicator. The next event we'll call Circle Aim. The goal is to click on every available circle before the timer on the top part of the box runs out following the same rules as the colored circles at the previous event. Right click for orange, left for teal, and left or right click for the yellow circles. The circles will either appear all at once or may only appear one at a time, similar to that other kind of game. Hmm. The third event we'll call Shrink Ring. Yes, I know, I'm running out of name ideas. The goal is to wait for the orange rings to match the size of the static gray circle, and left click when they meet. This event is very straightforward in terms of mechanics, where not matching the rings will result in failure. Very similar to this other fishing minigame I know. Hmm. For the last event we'll call Ping Pong, a teal circle will appear with colored lines on both ends. Using left click will cause the circle to go left, and right click will cause the circle to go right. But the goal is not to let the circle touch the colored lines as they close in, as if you do, you'll fail in the minigame. It's advised that you don't double click a direction, as it will probably lead to ending the minigame before you're able to change direction. Moving on to the combat event, you'll need to be fishing outside of a safe zone or else they won't be able to be triggered. You'll know if you entered a combat event once you get sucked into a whirlpool and get teleported into a different area. These areas are adventure zones, so no building, and in order to finish the combat event, three waves of enemies must be defeated with each start of a wave signaled by a water wave particle in the middle of the area. A mini boss enemy will appear at the end of the third wave, and after completing all three waves, the player will be teleported out of the area placed back to their previous location. After successfully completing any of these tasks, a certain reward type will be given to the player. For non-combat events, the rewards range from any fish type of 3-5 star rarity or a lesser fishing crate. 
For combat events, a greater fishing crate will be awarded for the first 4 completed events, as there is a hard cap of only 4 greater fishing crates per day. Any other combat events completed after the cap will only reward a lesser fishing crate. Finally, after you're done fishing and fighting, you'll be left with a random assortment of items wondering what to do with it. For the fish that are below 5 stars, you can trade them in at this station in Portmanteau, where they will be turned into sand stickers. Upon opening fishing crates, the lesser crates will always contain a small amount of region 3 currency and right of fishing bait, while the greater crates will always have one hyper ring, a sand dollar, and random filler loot such as vessel boons, colored augments, and overall delve materials. The sand dollars and stickers are the most important of these items as they are used in the majority of fishing related traits such as the crystallizer attachment to turn fish into sand stickers on the fly, strong artifacts, powerful potions using 5 star fish, and unlocking a new fishing difficulty called Rainstorm. Rainstorm increases the difficulty of the combat events where a mini boss will spawn on the second and third wave now. Completing the combat event will award the player with an Abyssal Crate, a slight upgrade to the greater crates that contain higher tier gear and more varied filler items. If you're looking to trade for more items after you're swimming in your own stickers, you can buy specialty bait located at these traders in Portmanteau. These bait had their own effects ranging from being able to upgrade the rarity of the fish you catch or trigger more combat events. Additionally, if you're looking to get more sand dollars after reaching your max cap from combat events, you can talk to this NPC who will always ask for a specific 5 star fish once a day, rewarding the player a greater crate when completed. If your patron with access to server buffs, the harvester effect also grants a plus 10% bonus for fishing rarity, while a very minor buff hits a buff regardless. That's it currently for the fishing content in Region 3. If anything changes, I'll probably make a follow-up video or say something in the comments, but no promises. So anyways, uh...